Good morning. This is Scott with Second to No One Canine Life Coaching. I want to discuss emotional systems and how they're evolutionary according to Yacht Panskip and how we actually figure out, and Dan Siegel, how we actually figure out where to use our emotional systems. What behaviors do the dog show us to tell you what emotional systems are they in? So let's go list the emotional systems. From very basic, you got number one, seeking. There are seven of them. Number one is seeking. That is what keeps you alive. Seeking is not just your sensory, not just your senses kicking in, but the way your brain completely takes in the environment, your subconscious and your conscious. I, it's, it's your anticipation. It's your predicting the future. Um, it's your brain trying to do everything it can to find rewards to keep you safe. Thank you, Wiley. Ow. I explain it like it's GPS, or not GPS, but you're going to a friend's house where you're gonna be safe. You're going to their new house, you've never been. You got your GPS, you're safe on the freeway. You're like, okay, I'm going to a new town, but it's telling me to get off in the next two exits. I can get over, get the next two exits, but the closer I get into town, the more I get anxious. You're anxious because you don't know the streets. You don't know the blocks. You don't know what you're supposed to turn. You don't know how far 800 feet really is when your GPS tells you to turn right. And then if it doesn't tell you which lane you're supposed to be in, you have to figure all that, the traffic, da da da. So while you're focusing on the immediate stuff you need, while you're consciously figuring out the, uh, the immediate stuff, your subconscious is taken in, there's a Popeye's chicken to your right. There's, a, there's somebody who's got Christmas trees on their, on their house permanently that never takes it off. Thank you, Wiley. Last one, we're gonna cuddle. All that stuff your subconscious takes in. Your, your subconscious takes in, Mabel Street is two blocks before your friend's house. Your next, his next door neighbor has a yellow house. All these things you take in subconsciously, so the next couple times you go, you'll start to go, oh, I didn't recognize that Popeye's chicken. I didn't notice this. I didn't notice that before. It's always been there. Your brain took it in. Your brain knew when to go in. Your brain's seeking all the stuff that could be dangerous so you can be safe. Your brain's taking in all your dangerous stuff, and the reason why you feel anxious is because your body is, is getting ready to fight or flight. But you're also seeking the safety of your friend's house. You're seeking the safety of what your uh, the GPS is telling you. Ow, that was a leash. Next is rage. Rage is an antisocial behavior. It is, I'm gonna fight whatever it is to get it out of the way. Detrimental to survival, if you really think about it when you're as a caveman or a, a dog that's not being friendly. It's antisocial, I want that to go away. Then you have fear. Fear is running away from something that you can't fight. Your flight system. Cuddle. You're so dirty. Your, so that's your flight system. Rage is your fight. So you've got it. There's a lot of, lot of things on those. A lot of research on those. Thank you, Barney. Then you have your care system. Your care system is your your first, your second positive social communication. That's the touching. That's literally the motherly instinct to take care of something else. That is the emotional aspect of, I see you. Last one, we're done. I see him panting. I see him being a little bit, a little too much. I see my kid needs water. I see my kid needs rest. Let's cuddle. And then it's also this. What that does is it brings in oxytocin. Yeah, I see. Hold on, Wiley. Hold on, Barney. And see how what, what's happening now? Yeah, he wants to play. Yeah, Wiley has a different need than Barney. He's still being pro-social. So this helping him feel better. Let's see if I can get this. A little bit better without my phone falling over. So Wiley wants comfort. Wiley. Barney, you're Bart. Wiley's still turning to me. Hold on. Thank you, Barney. You leave him alone. Hold on. So this is care and comfort. This is touch. This is protecting. This is all your care system. So they learn to feel better. 
This releases oxytocins. Yeah, good boy. See, even after all we do all that playing, he's able to calm down quicker. Even with the stress of Barney trying to say, I want to play with you. I want to annoy you to get you to chase me. This is helping him still stay social in a stressful situation. It doesn't seem stressful, but when you're tired, it's stressful. But you want to show behaviors that is going to help please everybody. That's your seeking system saying, I need to stay, I need to survive. I want comfort. I want touch. Thank you, Wiley. Then you have your panic grief system. Your panic grief system is still a negative emotional system with rage and fear, but it's a pro-social one. It is a social one. It's just like panic distress. I need something, I'm gonna cry out. I need help, I'm gonna find somebody. It's the equivalent of you, when you're doing the GPS, you know you're going to your friend's house. You're trying to find all these things to keep you safe. And ideally, if you have somebody with you, when you're stressed, that you're gonna turn to them. Or they're gonna turn to you, just by being a friend. I'm not gonna fix it, I had to because I had to keep Barney away. But I'm still gonna take care of his emotional needs of, you need comfort, you need to rest, you need to relax, and I will do that for you. That is your panic distress system saying, I need help, I'm scared. And that's where a lot of dogs communicate with us when they're being uh, nervous or they start barking at something and they're not trying to fight, but if they're barking and they're lunging and they're doing these other things to communicate, dogs that need rage are gonna fight. They're gonna fight. That's where you get your aggression. When you get your barking and lunging, that's warning to say, I'm not there yet, but I'm getting close. Then you get your lust, then you get play. Play is the behaviors that's gonna help them be pro-social, totally social, help them with cognitive function, help them with everything else, with learning, with all the other stuff, and socializing and learning rules. That's why you see kids and puppies play a lot. In the very beginning, it looks like crap. It looks like they're gonna hurt each other. Somebody's gonna get brain damage or a concussion from hitting their head too hard. Flopping over, oops, you're clumsy as hell. But then if you wait a couple minutes, you start to see it becomes magical. They're learning in the moment. Thank you. When they're learning in the moment, their brains are rewarded instantly. Once they're able to, once their brains get rewarded, you're 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 making neuro, you're making new pathways in the brain, neurological pathways, to keep going to those reward centers all over throughout the brain. Every part of the brain is working. Thank you, Barney. Thank you, Wiley. So if your dog goes from cuddling and playing the pro-social behaviors, lust we're not doing a whole lot on just because we dogs don't have much of a reproductive system anymore. So we're not fully sure how that handles with dogs. Not saying it's not possible, we're just not focused on that a lot because our dogs don't have sex, especially for pleasure. Yeah, yeah. So when your dog is social and showing these other behaviors, like it wants to cuddle, it wants to hang out with you, it wants to play with you, then another trigger comes in and it slows down. It goes into what they say freeze. Freeze is them gathering more information, deciding whether or not they need, they need to fight or flight. They're fiddling, they're nervous. That's the time for you to come in and comfort them. That's the time for you to say, hey, take charge and go, hey, let's go over here. Because if we go over here and we can leave, the danger's gone, they're gonna be social with you, and they're gonna start, and you can start petting them, and then you can start rewarding for behaviors you want repeated. Touch is extremely important to all animals, to all mammals. Don't doubt that, bring it back. So when you're up at your, when you get your dog that's playing at the top of the evolutionary mindset of the brain and your dog starts finding triggers and stressors, the next negative emotional system is going to be panic and grief. Your panic distress system. Your panic grief system. Influenced by panic distress. They're going to start looking for ways to get your attention quicker. If you don't meet their needs in that way, what's next? They're gonna try and do care. If care doesn't work, and that comes pretty quickly, and that's the need for um, touching and things like this, they're gonna go to fear. If they don't get their needs met in fear, they're gonna go into rage. If they don't go into rage, they're gonna learn, learn, learn helplessness because then they learn that you are not reliable communication. 
They still know how to seek to survive because seeking is what keeps you alive, period. Even through stress, that's what trauma is. Trauma is when the seeking system says, I can't rely on anybody and I'm gonna do whatever I can at the very basic ways and at least the chronic stress of surviving. People that suffer trauma are still, most of them are still alive. When you, the opposite of depression is play, not work. The opposite of play is depression. Barney, thank you, good leave it. So with that all said, again, the systems are seeking, fear, or seeking, rage, fear, care, panic, grief, lust, and then play. If your dog's able to do any of those top ones, then guess what? When they have an emotional need and they need help, and we influence this. Do you need water? Do you need cuddles? Do you need this? Do you need this? Do you need this? Anytime they cry out, we're there. That's what having a parent is for, to keep those kids out of those, having to experience those first, second and third emotional system. Barney. All right, you guys ready to get some water? All right. So it's already been 12 minutes. We played a little bit. So like, like I'm saying, most of the communication our dogs give us when they're stressed isn't fear unless it, or, or, or rage unless the dog hasn't had, you haven't met the dog's needs. They're going to do what it takes to get your attention, usually panic and grief. More often than not, it's crying. If your dog doesn't cry, it's going to bark. If barking gets your attention, they're going to use it more often. It's reinforced, right? You've, if I'm scared, I bark, you pay attention to me. That's my way of using panic. If I have to attack to get your attention, that's a completely antisocial behavior. And most dogs that attack don't bark and lunge. They're gonna go and attack because they feel that's the only way to get that danger to go away. Dogs that run away, you see them at dog parks where they're like, we've had fun, we've played, I need something else, I'm gonna go run to go get my needs met they can't find your car they completely run away if you've ignored that they needed rest if you've ignored their basic needs you've lost the dog you lost the dog that dog is now in a fear state the second emotional state and they're gonna fight off anything that comes near them so those dogs that are lost on the streets of San Francisco or in a city those dogs are at their most primal state of mind their most primal emotional states Every other one is influenced by another, so the emotional states can switch and, and float around. But they're always seeking rewards. Remember that. They're always seeking rewards. If that means that reward is getting your attention to get them out, that is a reward and that is something that is reinforced for them to come back and use that behavior to get your attention. So I think that's enough. It's been 12 minutes, 13 minutes. This is Scott with Second and No One Canine Life Coaching. Have a great day. Happy birthday to me, by the way. Happy 2020.